I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Cobra Kai star Ralph Macchio. Um, Ralph, the, that season finale of season three was so immensely satisfying because finally the old grudges boiled over and uh, Johnny and Daniel San finally get together and join forces against the evil crease. Were you as satisfied by the way season three ended as we were as the audience? Yes, I was. We all had, uh, you know, we had high hopes for the, the fan service we were hoping we were delivering. You know, it was after the end of season two, which was such, such a devastating mess that uh, both of these guys, both Daniel and Johnny, needed to take ownership about and had to clean up. Uh, season three ends. It is a fifth fist pumping season, you know, fist pumping ending. Um, I thought the uh, John, Josh and Hayden did a beautiful job of crafting it and, and bringing it uh, all together um, and, and ending it on that moment where this is what we've been waiting for. And as we move forward, having just completed season four, as Mr. Miyagi would say, not everything is as seem and not everything is as easy as you would expect. And that's sort of the joy of these, the gray areas of these characters is, is that they, um, they love to be together and they love to be at each other's throats, uh, even though they have the same end game in the crosshairs, uh, how they get there is, um, is, uh, is quite entertaining and to play as well. You know, you're so right. Uh, for, uh, for a man in my forties to be watching a TV show and literally like, yes, on the oh couch God. is something, it doesn't happen very often. So you are hundred percent right. Um, you know what, though, when the show first premiered way back on YouTube, um, I was, like many people, immediately drawn to it because it brought back characters from my childhood. And I found it so compelling um, and, and, you know, and nostalgic. But what I loved about what um, Leo and, the, sorry, what the creators Hayden and the team did um, was that underdog LaRusso um, became a successful businessman and family man, while tough guy Lawrence ended up being down and out. Um so, you know, they turn the tables on these characters intentionally. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering for you, um, given that you're involved in the show as well on behind the scenes, did it ultimately make it more interesting for Daniel not to be a complete saint? Right, that's a great, a great question because here he, and it's been um, uh, over the course of the three seasons and certainly in season three has become the richest for me as an actor. Um, peeling those onion layers off and, and, and diving into the nuances and the areas where he needs to continue to recalibrate his, his life, um, his midlife. Um, these are areas that were, you know, Daniel LaRusso is the teenager, the, the boy neck, the kid next door who had no business winning anything that we all rooted for. That was the teen childhood hero is now, thrust as an adult uh, into being someone who um, his flaws are amplified. He is rudderless at times. His intentions are always good, but his knee jerk personality gets him in trouble. Um, these are all rich uh, character traits to play. Um, and so you often talk about, okay, a guy who is you know, unlikable and now we all of a sudden feel for him to the flip side, you have a guy that was everybody's hero and now we're beginning to see, uh, you know, real true elements of flaws and intentions and mistakes and, but never losing sight of the fact that Daniel LaRusso is, his intentions are good. Even his teaching intentions to carry on Miyagi's legacy. The issue is just because you have knowledge of something doesn't necessarily mean you know how to teach it or you know how to teach it right. And, uh, and all those uh, uh, growth areas, um, the tear down, fall, skin your knees, have to get back up, um, how we're wired as adults and how it's tougher to rewire an adult um, is, uh, is part of the richness in, from the acting perspective and as a, as a performer, as an actor, bringing other colors and shades to, to Daniel LaRusso has been really uh, really rewarding and I, I look forward to continuing that. Are you conscious though that so many of us in the audience really relate to Daniel personally like we all many of us like myself um, you know idolized him as teenagers and kids 
And now we're all in our 40s and 50s. And so many of the things that happen on the show to him sometimes make me sit back and think, wow, this is very, very relatable. Uh, are you conscious of that? Um, I think that um, uh, all of those, you know, when a character is, is uh, rooted in um, and his foundation, and the basis of his foundation, we know. We've seen him grow up, if you will, or a couple of stories during that time. So we instinctively feel we know uh, him and we've been in that situation. Everyone's had, has dealt with some form of bullying at one point or whether it's a father son scenario or a single parent scenario. There are many things about LaRusso raised by a single mom, like I said, surrogate father, um, bullying, fish out of water, moved to a different town. These are a lot of, you check a lot of boxes of mm. things that people have been through. So then when you cut to him 34 years later, when we pick up Cobra Kai series, there is something innately that we we feel and connect to. And then you see his successes and then you find some of his failures under because the happily ever after that is launched at the beginning of the Cobra Kai series, slowly but surely we get to see, yes, he's grounded and he has his beliefs, but he gets uh, off balance, if you will. There's that balance word, Miyagi. It's it honestly, it's about recalibrating and and refinding your center. And we all do that at different phases of our lives, depending on what the world or relationships or interactions throw us. And I think that is part of the richness of, of adult Daniel Russo for me and hopefully the audience as well. Yeah. Um, and you touched on this, but what surprised me most of all, honestly, after the novelty of revisiting The Karate Kid, that wore off pretty quickly because I started to get to really um, lean into how it resonates on a deeper level about friendship and redemption and, and also about the underdog and the bully and, and right. where they end up after high school is all over. That's really powerful, isn't it? It's great. It's great. And that's what, you know, that was part of the, the credit to John Hurwitz, Hayden Slavsberg and Josh Heald. They saw all this in the Karate Kid um, you know, in the, the source material, if you will, in the original film and the franchise and, and wanted to dive deeper into all of, all of that. And, uh, and they've never lost sight. I mean, every season we have those conversations of, you know, keep aim, you know, keeping the eye on the ball of what the design of the show was, even though it will veer, go dark in some places, get really funny and silly and kind of, you know, argue ridiculous, the concept of these two, guys and how important karate in the valley is is sometimes billy and i we just we crack up in the middle of the scene and then we have to dial it back and because we have to treat it like the importance of what it is all of that touches on the humor the, the humor the drama the stakes you know and pepper in all the action and the you know the the badassness is there such a word i just made it <laughs> uh, yeah um you know, you just touched on this as well. It's actually the reason why the show works is because it tackles all those themes with sincerity. Um, mm -hmm. It's really refreshing in a time, you know, with a lot of irony and satire, which is also fantastic, but they dominate our pop culture these days in the way we speak to each other and just our cadence. But in this show, it's heartfelt rather than tongue in cheek. And that's important, isn't it? It's great. It grounds it. It, it, it. It's the strongest moments for me in the show are, are those um, because I mean, you know, I'm biased. It's based on the Karate Kid and that's, that's, the, that's the heart and soul of why that movie stands the test of time and has stood the test of time even before Cobra Kai uh, happened. You know, the Karate Kid, well, certainly for me has never gone away, but even for many people because people would, uh, generations would show it to the next generation because it does you know, there's the there's the goosebumps, there's the the um, the feels, all those moments of of wanting to do well. Even Johnny Lawrence's character, as you know, in the Cobra Kai series, you see a guy trying to fix, uh, stuck in the '80s in his mind, but trying to fix those moments. You see Larusso, Daniel Larusso, someone who's seemingly had it all, and now is losing his grip on his focus and has to rebalance himself. And that's, um, 
all those th things resonate on a human level. And so does the Karate Kid for that matter. And in essence, so does, does Cobra Kai. As zany as it gets, as, as big as the story gets and the fights and the confrontation, it still comes down to, you know, good over evil, fathers and sons, uh, uh, the good prevailing in the end and, and uh, you know, fighting your way through all the minutia, all this, this stuff that gets in the way the, to the true center of who you are. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's really important to keep the show grounded and not just for LaRusso, for my LaRusso, I, I shorthand his last name, not just for Daniel LaRusso, but for, you know, our young cast as well that are doing such a beautiful job um, in Mary Mauser and Tanner and Buchanan and Sholo and just to name a few yeah. that carry on the next generation for, for the show. It's, a, it's important. It really is. And the tone of the show is so intentional and, and just right. Like it would be, it would be a disaster if, this, if the tone of the show was off. And every time it gets super crazy, as you mentioned, it does eventually ground back to where it should be in the center as a balance. And that's yeah. really, really important for us as the audience. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, that really works. So many highlights from season three. I think for, for um, LaRusso, going back to Okinawa was, was a real highlight for all of us. And I'm sure for you as well. I know it was a whistle stop too. Uh, we got to revisit Tamlin Tamita and Yuji Okamoto and like some really iconic characters there um, that they play. So talk us through that like very, very quick visit to Okinawa and, um, and filming that, that part of the show. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's the highlight, one of the highlights for me of the entire season and something that I was hoping for. And, and we discussed early on, I went into the writer's room right before, as they were starting to write season three. And I said, I said, show me something about LaRusso that I don't know, that the world doesn't know. Teach us something that will help him that he doesn't know that we, you know, just let's fill in some blanks here. Cause it was, it was easier at the onset to do that with the Johnny Lawrence character. Cause we didn't know anything about his backstory and with the karate kid gives you a lot of Daniel Russo's backstory. But I said by season three and the guys, they were way ahead of me. They're like, we're writing this already. Just sit down, relax. <laughs> you know, we're going to be, we're going to be good. Cause I've been pitching uh, Okinawa and, uh, and the Kumiko character and, and Chosen's character is like, I felt that was a story that, that had so much more life. And they just did a beautiful job of crafting, um, um, hitting on those points, um, getting over there to Okinawa. And I did get to actually go to Okinawa, which was just so wonderful because Karate Kid Part Two was shot in Hawaii. So I'd never been there. So I got to go to the land of Miyagi, if you will. And, uh, and have these enriched, heartfelt, and yet comedic scenes with these two great characters, these wonderful actors who just knocked it out of the park and, uh, and brought their A-game and inform LaRusso going forward. And even how he represents himself and how he views Johnny Lawrence is changed by his experience in Okinawa, which helps to propel the story. And that's just beautiful writing on the, on the guy's part and, and, uh, and having, Miyagi woven into this series and at a midlife yeah. crisis point for Daniel LaRusso to get certain answers um, to, to, uh, to build and add more layers to his character it was just uh, spectacular for me as an actor. And I, I just uh, cherish having those scenes and those two episodes to play. It also opened the show up too. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it brought us out of it from, you know, it brought us on the other side of the mountain in the San Fernando Valley, you know, and it, it, it was a different scenery and in a good way and, and, uh, and connects with um, all that is, uh, is in the Karate Kid universe. It's still, it's still stories to tell. Yeah, um, it was really special, uh, you know. And and thank God now I don't have to tell people how to see this show. As an OG uh, fan <laughs> from the YouTube days, Hayden told me a few weeks ago that you uh, like liken this to um, it being off Broadway and then moving on <laughs> to you know to Broadway. That's yeah, yeah, the yeah, perfect right. way to put it. But how happy are you that this show has become? probably the biggest show on the streaming platform across the world. It's, um, you know, I'm just, I'm humbled. It's the, you know, I, it's the, the Karate Kid is the gift that keeps on giving. You know, some people say, 
you know, how do you embrace being associated with this character? Well, look what this character is giving and this franchise is giving to generations. I mean, I have, you know, eight, 10 year old kids coming up to me and they don't, they don't just, they don't always just mention the Karate Kid. They say, hey, you're the Daniel LaRusso from the Cobra Kai show. It's a whole other perspective. Um, it's just, you know, to have that global reach um, that Netflix allows us to have um, to wind up at Netflix, which is where we, you know, initial intention was, but for all the right reasons, it um, YouTube uh, did did the right thing by the show and got us to uh, get it get the kite up in the air. And um, you know, yeah, we had our out of town tryout, and then we're uh, you know at Radio City Music Hall or on Broadway. Yeah, that is my the other thing is like baseball. You could equivalent to baseball. You know, you're playing in the in the in the Grapefruit League, and then you get to play at Yankee Stadium. But yeah. I like the Broadway. I like the Broadway because I'm a I'm a I'm a theater guy, so that's why I went with that analogy. Thank you, Hayden Schlossberg. Very good. It's, it's so appropriate. Um, I wanted to quickly speak about another classic because we're getting close to the thirty <clears throat> excuse me thirty year anniversary of the classic My Cousin Vinny, where you played Bill Gambini. That's probably one of my favorite films of all time. I know so many people that have discovered that and just always talk about how they can watch it over and over. The incredible Joe Pesci, Marissa Tomei won an Oscar. Um, <clears throat> Fred Gwynn, who's sadly passed away. But I'll keep it super simple because we could talk, talk about that for the whole uh, rest right. of the interview. Uh, what's the one thing you hold on to as your most fondest memory uh, for being part of that film? Well, that film was, um, yeah, I call it the late for dinner movie. As you mentioned, if you're, if you're getting ready for dinner, you're going to be late if that's on. <laughs> uh, it does set up and pay off. Every setup pays off beautifully. Interestingly, not it's, it's so dissimilar to The Karate Kid, but it's still fish out of water in a way. Yeah. Um, but my cousin Vinny, the thing I take um, uh, out, of, out of that is, um, you know, witnessing Joe and Marissa and that perfect chemistry um, is one of the things I, I really take away. Also the ability for me playing a character that sort of bookends the story, um, keeping, you know, the performance up in the air, meaning uh, um, uh, staying connected to the performance when there were chunks of time where I wasn't on screen, yeah. where I did, you know, that was the first time that happened in a long while. I mean, even the outsiders, you know, that was ensemble, but I was, my cousin Vinny really had, I had a, a lot of time on screen, then there was an absent time and then the, the courtroom. Another thing I take away, I know you only asked me for one, is no, sitting yes. in that courtroom and, and listening to the brilliant Austin Pendleton play the stuttering public defender oh. and keeping a straight face. That is something I might've failed at if you look back at the movie and stop frame a few times because it was, he was incredible. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll take a sip of water. Yeah, oh man. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, there's some great, great, I, I love that film. I love, uh, I love having that one on the resume. It's really, really very nice to be a part of. Yeah, oh, it's incredible. And I'm so glad you raised that because I completely forgot about that scene too. And that's one of the highlights. But um, finally, we know you guys have finished production on season four. And so the crew are now busily getting into post-production. So what can we expect? I know you can't tell us anything, but uh, I'm sure you're going to say it's bigger and better than ever. Uh, bigger and better than ever. That's the easy yes and yes. But it um, it dives deeper into uh, the characters and stuff I was talking about just before. I mean, it for me personally, for you know, there are more uh, nuances and and uh, and shades and colors for Larusso going forward. Um, just because we end uh, the season three with that, these boys are together. Um, as Hayden, I will toss it back to him, mentions the Ross and Rachel of our show is the Johnny Lawrence and Daniel LaRusso. Um, so we, we, they, they're as entertaining when they're at each other's throats as they are when they're getting along. Um, um, some, some good surprises um, and uh, some really, um, uh, the navigating of the storylines where you think it may go left, it goes right and vice versa. And the guys do a great job of that and expanding the ensemble to be 
you know, they, you could sit in any one of these stories from their perspective and perspective is a big thing with the Cobra Kai series because it, it was born out of the perspective from Johnny's and Daniel's perspective of these, of this time in their lives. And so we see that through the younger cast as well as the OG cast, um, uh, what their perspectives are and how they get to where they're going is not always um, what you might predict. And super badass karate beyond your imagination. I'm really excited, mate. I'm just, <laughs> hurry up. Can you just guys just- Yeah, I know. Well, cutting it together, we actually had a call <laughs> earlier looking at one scene. It's uh, very, very exciting. I think it's, um, um, it's, it's just a great next step in this saga, if you will. And we are, I'm just having the, uh, the time of my life. I mean, I'm so beyond blessed to have this opportunity and to, to bring this, um, bring this character and his, his depth and next stage of levels to, to everyone. It's a, it's Christmas morning for me. It's really like Christmas morning getting each script. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and we're really happy for you too. And thank you so much for your time today. And congrats on a really strong season three. Great, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate the time.